Hi everybody, my name is Mike DeMauro, and I want to welcome you to the latest episode of My Life with Asperger's. Today's episode, I'm going to actually be talking about a question that was asked at the uh, conference that I went to last weekend. Earlier this month, I mean. For the uh, Hear Our Voices, which is sponsored by the University of Central Florida Center for Autism and Related Disabilities or UCF card. All right, one of the questions was about how when is a good time to put your kids in mainstream classes. And I want to say that I have been in both special education classes and mainstream classes when I was growing up in school. And I'll tell you about what happens when, what happens with me, and then I'll let you guys know what the best answer is for your question. Now, the question came at the conference. I was on the panel, and everybody else had their answers too, and I said what my answer was and how I was able to live my life going to special ed classes and mainstream classes. Now, I, I went to the Mullins, which was a special elementary school. It was a private school in Ludlow, Massachusetts. The school's no longer there, unfortunately. It was shut down like 13 years ago before the start of the century before the start of the 21st century, I should say. I do miss that school. I wish that school was still going on because I made a lot of great people and I met a lot of great people and I made a lot of great friends. I wish I was still talking to most of them because I do miss them. But I have I have kept in touch with a couple of them and I added one of them one of them on Facebook last week, so I was very happy about that. But anyways, now that school was special for me, because that was the school I was learned, I was taught how to write and read and speak, because I didn't speak when I first went there when I was three years old, so. Now, that school would have been a great school if it was still around today, you know? I would have loved to see that school around today. One of my dream jobs was to come back and be a teacher there. You know, one of my early dream jobs was to come back and be a teacher there. So I would have been a great teacher. But let's move forward. When I was like 13 years old, I transferred to another school. And then another school. Now, these were special education classes by the collaborative, and I went to these schools for middle school. Now, I was in mainstream classes for like, I was in mainstream for one of the classes my first year I went to collaborative, and then the next year I was mainstream for like three. And then for high school, I was placed in mainstream classes. I had academic support for my first year of high school, but that didn't last long. As my senior and, or as my sophomore, junior, and senior years came, because it was like I didn't need them. You know, I was doing well enough that I didn't need those classes, the academic support. So. I was taken out of academic support. Now, here's the thing here. Throughout my education as a child, and as a teenager, and going to high school and all that, I have had an IEP. There was an IEP put on me. You know, they wanted to make sure I could succeed in school. That's why I had an IEP. Even when I was taking the mainstream classes in high school, I had an IEP. 
you know, because they wanted to make sure I did well, you know. And coming from schools and programs that have IEPs, they continued it through in high school, too. Now, in college, when I went to Hoyle Community, I had uh, I had an advisor that dealt with special needs students at school. And that was my advisor to get, sign up for classes and all. I was supposed to have a, an advisor that was supposed to be in my field of major, but they transferred me to another academic advisor because of the fact that I was a special needs student at college. So that's why they transferred me over. Now, when I went to Westfield State, I didn't really get much help in the education because I didn't really need it. When I went to Hoyle Community, I was able to take tests in a separate room from everybody else. And I was able to take tests on the computer too. Now, when I was in Westfield State, I mostly took tests when everybody else did. And I mostly took it in the room with everybody else. Because they didn't, there was no need for me to go into the separate room. Though it was available to me if I needed it. Which I didn't need at the time. You know? So. That's the way my life has been going. Now, here's the thing. They needed a lot of help for me when I was growing up. And going to college, I was like, I didn't need any more help. And I did fine in college, you know. I have grown up to be a perfect, a perfect guy, you know. Well, I'm not a perfect guy. No one's perfect in this world, but, you know, I've grown up with a bachelor's degree now, and I'm trying to get a job with it, you know? So, that's my life story of me growing up in the school systems with an IEP, educa uh, Individual Educational Plan, you know? Now, now going in the workplace is real hard for me, trying to get a job. And I've been going to vocational rehab down here. And that's been real hard for me. With their help and assistance, they have not been helping me that much. You know, it's like, all you need is, you, all, all the help is yourself. No one wants to help you. You know? But anyways, going back to education, it is recommended that if your child is on the autism spectrum or have Asperger's or whatever, here's the thing. I would keep them in the special education classes. And if you feel and the teachers feel that the child can do well in mainstream classes, then you can put them there into the mainstream classes in certain subjects like I was my middle school years but if they feel okay at the special education classes just leave them there you know it's based on performance and how well they'll do because you don't want to put a, I don't, you don't need to put your kid in a class that they're not going to do well, and you know, they're, they're going to struggle in. You know, there are a lot of resources in the school systems to help your kids succeed. They don't want their kids to fail, you know. I have not failed any of my classes, let me just say that. But also note that I have struggled in some of my classes in school when I was growing up. You know, and I know in my college years, I had to withdraw from a few classes because I was not doing that well, or I felt I couldn't continue on, you know. 
I was able to make up one of those classes in, online, and I did fine in that. So now, and I'll talk about online classes in another video. No, I'm not going to talk about it here, obviously. So, but anyways, that would be my best sol solution for you guys if you try to figure out what's the best for the child to do. My best recommendation, like I said, is to keep them in the special education classes. And if they perform well and feel confident enough, then you can put them in the mainstream classes. And if they feel comfortable doing being in the special education classes, don't worry. They can stay there, you know. But just remember to just try to make sure that the decisions for your kids are the best ones and which ones will help them succeed in the future. Because you don't want to put your kids in a class where they're going to struggle. You know, their teachers are there to help them. They're, they're not there to uh, punish them. They're not there to fail your kids. They're there to pass your kids. And they just need the help. So, please, take my recommendation. I know every person is different. Every child's different. I understand that. I was different. You know, I wasn't diagnosed with Asperger's until I was 22 years old. So, and it's been hard on my parents and my teachers and my doctors to try to figure out what I had when I was growing up. You know, and then the, finally the correct doctor made the decision that I had Asperger's and tested me. So, it took me a while before I figured out what I had. You know, you guys are probably luckier that you guys find, find out that your kid has Asperger's at like three or four years old, you know. So, but yes, please take my recommendation into consideration when making a decision for your kids, i.e. this video. You know, this video is here to help you guys out. I'm here to help you guys out. I'm here to teach people about my life with Asperger's. I'm also here to teach the parents on how to help make their kids very successful that are on the spectrum. You know, I hope you guys will continue watching My Life with Asperger's. And I hope to see you guys on future episodes of My Life with Asperger's. And I hope to see you guys out in the community. I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye for now.